So thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming to today's Magnet Seminar. Uh, on behalf of our team, we welcome you again today. Um, our format usually is about 30 minutes presentation and followed by about 10 to 15 minutes time per Q&A. And you can write your questions in the chat or unmute yourself and ask them both. And then it's going to be time for catch up in the end, which is not recorded if you're interested. And I'm really happy to introduce you today, Tron Tosvik from University of Oslo, Norway, um, who's going to present the mind-bending mystery of the Hawaiian Emperor Band. Uh, so thank you. Uh, the floor is yours. First of all, I have to apologize. I didn't read the email very well. I was I was told this was like 45 minutes to an hour, but then I was just told it's 25 to 30 minutes. I have to be very, very fast. And uh, uh, so what I, I'll, I'm going to talk about something I was in, mostly interesting, like four, five, six years ago before the COVID. And this talk I gave as, some, as a Friday wine seminar is kind of illuminized in a way that I'm talking about a, some uh, controversy, great debate, but I'm trying to illuminize. I don't even show the reference to my own work or other people, except in the beginning. <clears throat> But it's really concerned with uh, why do we have this band in the Emperor Hawaiian chain? And literally every paper you read on this issue in the introduction will state these uh, three courses. Either it's an abrupt Pacific plate motion change at around 47 million, rapid southward drift of the Hawaiian hotspot before 47 million indicated by this era, or a combination of these two courses. And for a long time, and I still, uh, I think um, I was kind of tempted to go for the combination, but uh, the more I thought about trying to understand the band, I think th the band itself is not a combination, but probably actually by play motion change. But still, we cannot ignore the effect of uh, hotspot drift. Uh, this debate, as many others, are characterized by scientific polarization. Contemporary societies often polarize in the sense that subgroups within these society hold stable opposing beliefs, and then they write even when there is a fact of the matter. The problem is what we consider the fact of the matter. So uh, people actually do research into this, and there are many polarized debates we have. Uh, we have Pangea A versus Pangea B is a classic one. Um, we have plate versus plumes is another one. Uh, I prefer to say plates and plumes because I do believe in plumes and I do believe in plate tectonics. And uh, of course, we have very different opinion on how these model works in, in, in deep earth. Uh, we also have, uh, many of you are probably aware of, we have these low velocity sounds in the Lomos mantle between Africa and the Pacific. Some argue they are stable partly because when you reconstruct a lot of igneous problems through time, they have a tendency of falling along the margins. The only real exception is Columbia River basalt. And this is for the last 300 million years. But then you have others who think they are uh, dynamic LCP and they're just pushed around by subduction sound, which you see in wide lines there. And of course, in modeling, uh, this is from actually from a nature paper of this year, and I've just picked one of them, the one they preferred, model seven out of 22. So uh, stable versus dynamic LCP, and what I'm gonna talk about today, uh, which is kind of polarized, hotspot motion versus plate motion change, but part of the discussion also are the, are the hotspots, some fixed or moving hotspots, some actually have some of them, only the Pacific are moving and the Indo-Atlantic are fixed, so that's another version. And here you can see, I uh, anonymized this is a paper from 2017, 2019, they have totally different opinions. Pacific plate motion change caused the Hawaiian Emperor Bam, which was here at about 47. And the other one, two years later, hotspot motion core, hotspot motion caused, and they all said, and LCP are not fixed. So they are dynamic in move. So that was added on. But you can see here, it's clearly, um, it's clearly two very, different and polarized opinion on this matter. In this debate, we also have a problem. What are the plate circuits? How do you link the Pacific to the Indo-Atlantic? Indo and also discussion on true polar wonder, if that has something making trouble here or not. 
Just a few things about uh, how I am per band. It was first suggested by Tusa Wilson, 1963, that you, uh, that you actually had a, what they call focus spot and melting in a mantle which produced a Hawaiian chain, it was later uh, turned hotspot, Jason Morgan, 1971, and it was supposed to be software sourced by D mantle plumes. Uh, Morgan also influential in building the first kinematic to define absolute plate motion in a fixed, he used a fixed OSPO reference frame. And of course, in this in his model, so we talk about 1972, the Hawaiian Emperor band was attributed to a change in the absolute motion of the Pacific plate. So that was in 1972. And um, there are, there's a number of problems with this. Fixed hotspots doesn't really work very well, but I will not dwell on that here, but just just interesting, 45 years later, 2017, one group actually have exactly the same conclusion. And actually some people reacted to this paper and say, what's new? Morgan said it already in 1972. So, um, so here you have one group actually following. Another problem with, uh, with explaining that it was actually a plate motion change was pointed out by Ian Norton, he called it the 43 million non-event. We now have it about 47 million years. He said such a large and abrupt direction change, about 60 degrees, should result in significant plate reorganization and tectonic events in the Pacific and surrounding plate. But no evidence for these can be found. I would disagree today, but, and, but at that time, that was a valid argument. And um, so he said it must be a non stage only hotspots. So the other paper from 29, 25 years later, kind of agree with Ian Norton on this. <laughs> and of course, I'm a Palimag. This is a, a magnet seminar. There won't be too much about Palimag, but of course, Palimag was very important in this debate uh, in early time. And, and um, if you look from the oldest Detroit seamount, you can see if you keep Plot them with a Hawaii fixed. It is about 19 degrees at the moment, but had just put fixed at zero. You could see that Detroit plotted about 15 degrees to the north. And it looks like a nice, it's coming down and uh, the band is about here 47. So I thought this was a pretty cool and important uh, paper uh, for, for many, many years. <clears throat> But some of, the, some of the things which got me a little curious, it would be nice because from the Palimag, if you start sampling younger now, it should fall on the zero line, you know, if the band was purely related to this issue. But if you actually look at younger one, and um, there was an old midway, a midway basalt about here, now it's a new one uh, just for the basalt, but they actually average soils and basalt and got a, almost a zero, the correct answer. But still, we have a problem with Hawaii doesn't fit, and also Uhau, or how you pronounce it. So there still seems to be um, inclination and latitudinal anomaly, even with the youngest. So that uh, concerns me a little about apparent data. And, and if you do a true polar wonder correction, and of course, there are different ways of doing this. I'm doing it the way I do it you see actually only Detroit actually falls above the zero line or Hawaii fixed. And it's about nine degrees and all the others are below. So um, I was a little confused with whether this actually work or is there something wrong with the true polar wonder correction. Also been written paper trying to understand this anomaly here. This was caused by non-dipole field. And uh, we have these uh, low velocity sound at a core metal boundary in Hawaii sitting on the margin and um, some would say you would have strong variation in core metal boundary heat flow, which could lead to non-dipole field contribution. And people also say that for instance about reunion, but we have resampled the reunion. We don't actually find this anomaly there any longer. When it comes to true polar wonder, I think it's quite easy to explain it from, we have a phase from 200 to 150. You can see all the continents are rotating on a point which is close to equators, about 11 degrees. You see a similar uh, 150 to 140, 100 to 110. When it comes to the younger part, and you can see it here now, for the younger part, we actually use a difference from a hospital reference frame. And actually at the critical time, and, and this 200 to 130 and back here, and maybe for the last 40 million years, you are actually rotating on an axis, which is close to this point 
at around 10, 11 degree. But you can see there is uh, something funny going on from about 90 to 40. So that's, and this is in a critical period where we also try to do true polar wonder correction for the parameter data on the Hawaiian change. So you can also see the speed of true polar wonder we get from these models. And even today, today, true polar wonder is something happening right now. We can measure that geodetically. It's happened about at one degree per million year or 10 centimeter per year. But from these models, we only get like 0.35 or something. And the difference here actually could be partly deglaciation. It's actually global warming that actually contributes to true polar wonder today. And of course, modeling since 2016, people also tried to, so we had this with the paleomag and also from uh, modeling, there was a paper in Nature uh, 2016, a rapid burst in hospital motion through the interaction of tectonic and deep mantle flow. And they have a statement here called rapid southward motion of iron plume followed by a sh shock. I would, one of the messages I give you here, if you say it was all southward and mention my word southward or something close to southward, I, the main message in the end would say that's impossible from a geometrical point of view. And that would be an important point of this lecture. So I just uh, <clears throat> just showed this. Uh, this was from a model point of view. And in their model, they actually took just Jason, one of these low velocity sound, and it's actually pushed southward. And if you look at the model hospital drift, so this is a southward, you can see it's about 12 degrees here. It goes down and it flattens out a little just before the bend. But of course, the ideal scenario would be go down there and, and if it was all. Immediate problem you see with this conclusion is that this is only nine degrees, but the imperial chain is actually 19 degrees. So everyone with simple mathematics will realize you are missing 10 degrees here. So you, just by looking at this simple geometry, you realize there is something wrong. Also, when you can look at different tomography models and you can advect it back in time, and uh, you can compare them. Here was this, this was a forward model, the one I pointed out. You can take a number of, of backward advected model here. You probably know about Asmin, Savani. This is one of the newest, Simoxi. Uh, the message from this, none of these models actually show anything special happening about that. They go straight through at half time and too little to account for the length. Do you see there's about 10, 12 degrees. So, so none of these really show anything spectacular if you believe in modeling. So now it's really the lecture. So now I was very fast because that speed and I was, was supposed to be very slow and give you a really cool introduction. So, so now, <clears throat> so we have this thing to understand this thing. What's the effect of, uh, of um, hotspot drift and what's the effect of plate motion? And um, when I was sitting on my balcony in Berlin in 2016, had a lot of red wine on my during my sabbatical there, I thought there must be some way of figuring out what is possible and not possible with all these things, because there's, there's a lot, there is a lot of variables and we can't all be right or wrong. So I'll start with a popular claim. The emperor seamounts were formed by rapid southward motion of the high end water between 81 and 47 million years. So that's this thing here. Okay, to do that, if it's southward, you need 19 degrees. And in this very simple simulation, we attribute the entire north south 19 to southward hospital drift over this interval. And we assume that the Pacific plate moved with the same angular velocity before and after the formation of the band. And that's about 0.72 degree per million year. So that's the assumption. If you try to do some arithmetic on this, you will see in this scenario, the host would have to move so fast, actually five times faster than the Pacific plate at a rate of 3.8 uh, degree per million year. So this, this is the rate you need to do it. And if you look at this number now, in order to do that, this extremely fast mode implies the entire amplitude freighted in just five million years, okay? So, so then you get an understanding that, that this is geometrically impossible because we know this should be 80 and not 52 million years. So geometrically, you cannot state that 
you can explain the band by southward drift. It is, to my understanding of airlock geometry, uh, not possible. So here you can show it just uh, since I'm bad time, but it's just an animation. And this will be actually the H's of, um, of the Emperor and Hawaii chain if it was purely by southward hotspot drift. And if you make it even slightly more aligned with Emperor chain, you need even to do it fast. You can do another simulation. You can, you can actually get a fit to the H's, uh, but you can only do that if you move the Pacific plate before the band at an extremely low rate, okay? So you have to move it really, really tiny uh, to be able to get a hotspot drift down to, let's say, 0.58 degree per million years. So it is it's emphasized would require an extremely slow rate, a 0.13, followed by an early six-fold acceleration after 47, which is not supported by any observation or model. But be aware, this is also a change in plate motion, but it's a change in plate velocity, okay? So that, so it, it, um, it's, it's, it's a highly unlikely. So simple considerations show it would be extremely difficult, I say extremely, almost theoretically impossible to reproduce to have if no changed. Okay, so I'm saying that, but uh, it's kind of easy conclusion out of this geometrical exercise, but, but can we demonstrate that placement is actually the cause for the have? Do, do we actually have models where we actually get this to fit? We have not, not told you what is not possible, and now we have to have, have some way of fitting these things. For that, we need actual plate motion frames. And for the last uh, 130 million years, we can use a mixture of moving and fixed Hopper global reference frames. And um, we only really concerned with the last 80 million years. And uh, this has been done. One of the first, the first one of these in, 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 is from 2004. And this paper also pointed out some of the problems people had for a decade or two that if you assume that Africa hotspot were fixed, sorry, if all hotspot was fixed, you will see this stipple line here. You cannot reproduce that emperor chain. And um, you could, this one is kind of weird because it's had Africa hotspot fixed, but Hawaii hotspot moving. And I think the reason this curve was introduced is because there are actually some people claiming that the African or Indo-Atlantic, they are actually fixed, but and only the Pacific are moving, but still you can see it really see much, maybe a little band there. And in this particular paper, it also had to do with different plate circuits. You had a model A, now you can see you start reproducing the emperor chain, but in this favorite model, in this paper, model B, you can see it's not too bad up to about 60 million years, but then it sets off. That was in 2004, there was a new model from two, there was another one in 2008. Now you can see it's the same as model B, but with some modification on some plate circuits, et cetera. You can see we can kind of reproduce this, um, the, the, the emperor part as well. To show it, the latest model is actually 10 years old. So it's timely to build another one, but I just show you the 2012 version, what is based on, is based on using five hotspot tracks. And here's the Hawaii Emperor is one of them. We fit, they are fitted with spherical spline fits. Uh, you put on uh, relative plate circuits, and then you backward direction of present day metal density structure. And of course, there you use, a, here they used a particularly tomography model. This time this will use the S-mean model. Uh, but of course, there are many others out there who will give you slightly different answers. But in this one, for instance, the Hawaii uh, for the younger part is, like, is uh, southward. You can see New England here, Reunion. Louisville has, has much of an east-west variation. And then Tristan. So this is what the Earth had 30 million years with five hotspots. The, the previous version only had four hotspots, so this was five. And what do you get with this model? So this was uh, the 2008 model. You can see in this latest model here now, you are pretty much able to um, to reproduce these things within the errors, uh, which is really errors on on uh, on H's and not very much more. But you can see now we are 
able to, um, to reproduce it. But of course, what you are looking there is a combination of, of the plate motion and hotspot drift. And to separate it out, to take away now the, now you are now in the, in the Pacific frame, if you now take away that hotspot drift to see what is left, it's like treating Hawaii in the fixed hotspot reference frame, you actually see what the plate motion is. So that's the red line. And now you can see here that the entire band. So this is the real plate motion line in this. So this is the, so we are actually able to reproduce this band as a plate motion chain. But now you can see there's a missing part or it doesn't really reach up to Detroit. And this, what is missing there, that is the hotspot drift. So again, the entire 60 degree Hawaiian can be explained by change in Pacific plate motions. <clears throat> we have shown that that is impossible theoretically uh, with a pure southward drift model, uh, but the hotspot track would be produced by smartly shifted to the south, and it's not just important, north running segment is about 800 kilometers short. So you have a missing 800 kilometer. That is the southward hotspot drift. To make a very simple model, so in this particular one, we have a we have a hotspot drift from 80 million years here. This is the real plate motion change, and the missing part, 800 kilometer, is is the hotspot drift. So the take on message: this uh, explaining everything by a, a southward drifting a hotspot is, I call it a challenge. You know, I said impossible before, but there is one way away away from it that we 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 have dated the wrongs wrong. You know, they're not eighty, but they're fifty-two. But I doubt that somebody maybe we didn't get a decay constant right. But I seriously doubt that. It's what I call it challenging. And also this uh, scenario here, where the plate moved extremely slowly in order to get the age progression right, is a highly unlikely scenario. You can do another one, and in this process, many years ago, I realized people have said this, uh, and uh, I think I even saw a diagram of somebody. Is that because everyone talk about southward drift or it's slightly, uh, slightly almost parallel to to the um, Hawaiian, but of course you you can get away with it if the hospital drift has a huge westerly component. Okay, so then you can actually do this. The pr one other problem with that is that uh, if you look at um, all geodynamic modeling, if you believe in them, but if you believe in them, none of them actually show this kind of trend. They are either north to south or north, northwest to south or east. But again, you can say if you don't believe in geodynamic modeling, you can go for this one. And um, that is, is uh, a possibility. <clears throat> so just to be controversial towards the end, the case of debating hospital drivers and Plato, may have been avoided if Leonard Euler had all of the information in the 18th century, since there are simple Euler geometric considerations that must be accounted for. And I hope that is factual information. Because we have ages, we have the geometry. If there was a pure southward drift, we know it had to be 90 degrees. You have a little triangle here. And, and if we have the same speed going here, 0.72 per million years, you, we we get it. We get into trouble because you have to have a drift which is 3.8 degree per million year. I told you that before. And the implication is you may create amplitude chain in five million years and not 33 million years. So um, conclusion: hotspot motion and so instead, there's a lot of these debates. It's something versus something else, like plume versus plates. Um, many times you can say, you know, plumes and plates, or plates and plumes. And it is also hotspot motion and plate motion change. But what I, I or at least for now, kind of believe in, the hotspot motion is simply, is the added length of the chain or the amplitude chain path, and it's the plate motion change which creates the band. So, um, and um, so here's the critical word, end. And... Um, and of course, tonight, but what caused the plate motion change? And to model is another lecture. I could have given a lecture of that because 
how, how do we how do we go around this paper? What is this non-event? But um, uh, um, we we have ideas for that in some sort of old classic model. If you look in the Pacific, we have an Izanagi play. It's fully syntactic, so it means it's fully made up. Kula kind of made up, but it's you have the counter modern in Pacific. Uh, it seems like some sort of simple saying that not much going on. But actually, if you look at tomography today, it's not only the Kula. We can see here a very strong uh, in the tomographic model. We can call a North Pacific uh, plate. And there's a lot of arcs out there. There's paleomagondes. They get a crater. There's a big change. The main thing here is a very big change in the northern part of the Pacific, uh, just prior to and during the band. And you can even see it in the vertical section. Actually, most of, most of the active ongoing subduction in both the North and the West Pacific are actually almost at band time initiated. And you can see it beautiful here with the, with the, with the, slab, with the slab here, the latent slab, which you can see all the way from the surface down to the transition sound here. And I would say that is less or equal to, to hab time. And you, in, the, in the bottom here, you actually find a prehab, which was this part here, which is now seen at 66 million years. So I just uh, hope, I have no idea about my time, but thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tron. <laughs> Let's... Uh... Give a, a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we have time for questions. Yeah, ma many applause, <laughs> applauses. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, so you can, anybody who wants to ask question, you can unmute yourself or you can write in the chat and I will read it out. Um, may I ask a question? Sure, you're welcome. Uh, Vadim Kravchinsky, Canada. Uh, hi, Trond. Uh, hi. Thank you very much for uh, such an interesting presentation. And are there any other hotspots which also banned kind of the same way and uh, which existed for a very long time so you could check if... if models you suggest also work in other parts of the world? Like Reunion, for example, existed for a long time and some other in Indian, some other hotspots in the Indian Ocean. Did someone try this? Thank you. Well, as I had on the slide in the beginning, that Hawaiian Emperor is really a remarkable, unique feature on Earth. And there is nothing which is so long-lived and show this sharp band. And we have looked at other, you mentioned reunion. The reunion, uh, at least we think, only lasts back to about 66 million years. And there, there, is, uh, there is a, we have written about that there is kind of a big change during the acceleration of the, of the Indian plate. It seems to be deflected, kind of uh, what's going to be northeastward. And when the speed goes down again, it kind of comes back again. So, but it's, it's, but the Hawaii Emperor Band is really, really unique. So it's very, very hard to find any, any good things like that. You know. Fortunately, it would be nice if we had many of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question from the audience? I've got one. Rory, you're welcome. Why must the Pacific plate move during the, the Eocene? Why can't it be stationary or at a standstill as it was during much of the mid-Cretaceous? Oh, you mean just before the band? Yeah. Well, I'm saying it's possible, okay? But it is possible, but then you also introduce, then there's also a change in, you know, when you talk change in plate mode, that could, in, in, in plate motion, you know, it's either the speed or the direction. So it's still, that is a possibility, but then it's, it's really, really slow, you know. And it doesn't really fit, I say, uh, it, in the global Hotspot reference frame, that doesn't really fit, okay? Unless you ignore them or don't believe in them. Yeah. 
but it, I, I, that is in one little simulation I show you one possibility. But it's so Dan is not a change in in plate uh, direction, but it's uh, extreme change in uh, plate speed. And yes, we had a still stand which was earlier, uh, but. But the still stand, you're, you're, you're more thinking in terms of magnetic and parametric poles, yeah. okay, in still stand. Mm -hmm. okay? And of course, there was no, there were, North America wasn't in still stand. It was simply moving uh, westward, okay? It's simply you had no, you had no change in the, in the inclination data. So it looks like it's just an apparent. So the North American still stand, and of course, it's kind of disconnected, not disconnected, connected to Pacific plate. So that also means the Pacific plate is, is moving, uh, uh, can also moves, but the, the still stand is simply, simply that uh, North America is not moving in north south at all. So, so, so it's a paleomagnetic thing. Yeah. But the Pacific may not have also. I mean, there's there are some paleomagnetic poles for the same time. They're they're based on marine magnetic anomalies yeah. as well, but they also suggest that there was very little motion of the Pacific plate yeah. throughout much of the Eocene. Yeah, well, it, 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 yeah, that, that's true. We also, we also have looked at the parametric poles, but, uh, but of course, again, in this discussion, it depends uh, what data you look at. And, uh, and are you thinking about the, the one derived from the skewed magnetic anomalies or? There's, yeah. there, there's a number, there's, um, yeah. Uh, a lot of, of Gordon yeah. Acton's work through yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 33R, yeah. which is, is based off of a, yeah. an abstract only. Yeah. Um, we tried to do a azimuthly reoriented pole for Detroit using the mm. Bruins overprint to yeah. get a Detroit pole as opposed to just looking at the paleo latitude data. Yeah. Yeah. And the Paleo latitude of Wodejibito matches that of the Detroit co latitude. Yeah. Um, let's see, 27R also plots high in the Pacific. Yeah. So there's reason to believe the Pacific plate itself, similar to what it may have also been doing during the Middle Cretaceous, is that it was. The Pacific Basin was more dominated by <laughs> the plates on its outside, mm -hmm. the Farallon plate or the Kula plate or the Izignagi plate. The Pacific plate wasn't moving. There was maybe asymmetric spreading. The, full, the mm -hmm. Farallon plate, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the conclusions that right, um, oh, what year was that, 2015? Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember exactly, mm -hmm. but they were looking at the fracture patterns as an example for uh, Pacific Farallon motion versus Pacific and Antarctic motion and came up with the, and came to the conclusion that there's no evidence of a change in plate motion at 47 million years based on looking at the fracture patterns within the, mm -hmm. uh, among other things, but the fracture patterns is yeah. what sticks in my head. Uh, and that, the conclusion was Pacific ne wasn't necessarily moving, but most of that motion was accommodated by the Farallon plate moving to the east. Mm -hmm. So why can't the Pacific plate simply be standing still? No, no, I'm not saying uh, this is theoretically possible. I think with my tree simulation, the main point I want to make, if you just have southward phosphor drift, which is that is geometrically impossible, okay? If, mm -hmm. yes, that's the only thing. Okay, yeah. then you have two other options. You can either have almost a still stand, and that's what you're saying. So, mm -hmm. if we can find some good evidence for that, uh, but so that's theoretically possible, or that the plate drift had such a um, southwesterly component. So, so what, what I try to do, it's more some sort of. I have been thinking about this also. You know, was it this and that and. And it drove me nuts several papers. And a few years later, I was wondering if it was right and wrong. And I put myself on play, pe uh, people with others. And uh, suddenly I thought there must be some way at least to put the boundary condition. That's what I try. Simple geometry. What is possible? OK. And maybe we should ask us that question sometimes before we spend a lot of money trying to explore something. You know, you know what is possible? OK. 
like one paper there, which is uh, which was a big headline in Nature using the biggest supercomputer in the country. I'm not going to mention. Yeah. End up with a conclusion that it's all due to southward drift. Okay, <laughs> which is yeah. impossible. <laughs> all right. So you have a supercomputer, you know, doing calculations for months, coming, giving you something which is theoretically impossible. Okay, because that supercomputer is not obviously wasn't trained in Euler geometry, you know, whether this made sense or not. And I think that has to stop. And it, it makes me a little sad seeing these kind of studies. Yeah. So read nature if you're going to find something weird. It's a lot of it. Maybe in science, this one. But they, they like sensations, you see. All right. Yeah. When I tried to publish this once upon a time in the real nature, they said, this is not very interesting. And when I cover that, say, yeah, but we have some theoretical consideration. A lot of these papers you published recently, they are incorrect. And then they told me, oh, you can write a comment then, but I don't write comments. You never win in comments, okay? Right. The authors right. always have the last <laughs> word. <laughs> All right, thank you. I would like to thank uh, again, Tron, for a very good presentation. Thank you. I'm really sure everybody enjoyed it. And it's always good to keep the dialogue and the science going. It's really lively and good, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Big round of applause. <laughs> um, I will share just final slides. So uh, we are keeping the EU America's time slot until the, the end of this year. Next talk is going to be by James Bryson. Fifth of October, then uh, uh, Geoff Lerner from, from Mexico. And we're going to have other few talks, so stay tuned in our channels. And we are looking for 2023 uh, speakers. And you can find this recording and all the previous ones on our YouTube channel. So stay up to date and follow us. And thank you uh, a lot for, for being here and following us. Thank you.